Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today we are going to do a reading from our spirit guides. Um, just any messages or signs that maybe, you know, you haven't picked up on that your guides have been sending you, which is normal, by the way. Um, that's why our guides will definitely send a sign more than one time, especially if you feel like, well, was that a sign? Ask them to send it again. They will. Um, but this is why I do these readings for, first of all, I read through my spirit guides who I believe connect to your spirit guides. That's why I feel a reading can relate to so many people because, again, it's on a spiritual level. Um, so I would just take a moment and just relax your mind. Certainly call in your guides, ask them to be with you through the, throughout the reading um, and to give you clear signs, you know. Um, I feel like if you're here, then chances are you were meant to be here because I feel like in these type of readings, you're guided to them or you just like come across them and you're like, hmm, you know what? I think I'm going to give it a listen. I feel like that is your, those, that is your spirit guides or those are your spirit guides. Um, so again, I've already called in my guides. I'm looking for any messages that, um, again, potentially we have missed that's important that we know. And it's regarding anything and everything. Love, life, money, you name it. I feel like our guides will cover it. So we're going to use a few different decks for this. We are going to Start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom, especially when we do this type of reading. We will use the Gilded Tarot um, to clarify or really to go deeper if, you know, if we feel like we need to. And, you know, it's interesting. I always notice that when I do this type of reading, I always say we. It's And I say we because I know that my guides are now connected to me. So when I say we... I mean, me and all of our spirit guides. Um, but anyway, so interesting. I just noticed that um, we are going to use the psychic tarot for the main spread. And again, signs that you may have been missing relating to anything. Now, if love does come up, I also have the romance angels out that, you know, we may pull in um, if need be. But. Really, this is just whatever. I'm just completely open to whatever our spirit guides want to let us know at this moment. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, let's go ahead and start with Mother Mary. And everything is always pre-shuffled, by the way. But I do like to give it a shuffle with you here. This is for all signs, all people. Interesting. I wanted to say even our animals, like our pets, because some some of us have pets who really are soulmates. And I don't know if everybody believes in that or not, but I do. All right, I'm going to bring the lid down just a little bit, and I'm going to officially open this reading. So, Spirit Guides of the Light. What messages do we need to hear right now? Now, I say right now, but I want you to know that this type of reading, you'll find it or it'll find you in what I call divine timing, just when you need it. We have inner child. Mm, I like that. Inner child. I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care. You know, it's interesting because I've just been picking up on this energy of, like, I feel like this period of time, let's just say, maybe for the rest of 2024, um, it really is meant to be more of a playful time. It doesn't mean, you know, that I'm not going to still work hard or what have you. But I feel like, you know, all work and no play, that's not a balanced life. So I feel like this is really talking about balance, finding that balance. Some of you, you know, it's like when you have heartache, 
Um, I feel like it goes right to the inner child. So I hope this is talking about also the healing of the inner child. But I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care. Um, I'm going to leave Mother Mary out because I will probably take another one at the end of the reading. But inner child. So we'll put that right there. And let's go ahead and bring in the Psychic Tarot. Um, by the way, I just got done doing a Twin Flame slash Soulmate reading. And I have to say, I loved it. I thought it was so clear. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that everybody does. But to me, it felt so clear. So if you haven't checked it out and um, you feel like you're in a twin flame or a soulmate connection, you may want to check it out because it really has some good information. Okay. Anyways, and I'm, and I'm not trying to push that video on you. I just want to let you know for those who are in that type of connection, I feel like it brought, it brought a lot of clarity. But let's go ahead and open up this reading. So, to my beautiful spiritual team, messages for those who are here and those who will be here. All right. We have solitude. This is the hermit. Interesting. Um, it is the card of Virgo, though, you know. Many times I'm not really looking at the sign. I'm really looking at the energy. Some of you this could certainly talk about, um, I feel like in the hermit's energy, you know, something may have brought us down to our knees and maybe we felt like there was no way out. But really in the hermit's energy, like, you know, you'll see the hermit either going into a cave and that's where I feel like I'm asking those big questions. I'm looking for spiritual guidance, you know, I'm looking for the light. And I feel like in the hermit's energy, what we really figure out, if we allow ourselves, is that we are the light, that we have a lot of power um, here on earth, that we can, you know, work hand in hand with divine to really manifest, you know, I'm not going to say exactly what you want, but probably better. Um, nine to me is definitely about reflection, but to me, it's also about final reflection. And what I mean by that is I don't feel like we're meant to reflect forever. Um, it's interesting because, you know, she could be reading the Bible, getting some inspiration, or could be the book, um, the Akashic Records, you know, connecting to the Akashic Records. Everything that is done, said, every action is written in the Akashic Records. Um, so anyways, the Hermit. And then we have the Two of Swords. Here it's called Mental Conflict. Hmm. Mental Conflict. So Two Swords, to me, really is about a potential blindfold. It could be something that, you know, I'm worried about facing. I just realized 9, 10, 11, 11, make a wish. Um, it's interesting because it's bringing me even back to that twin flame reading. Because uh, I associate 11 a lot with a twin flame, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, but anyway, so in mental conflict, I feel like there's just something that I may not want to face. And it's, I feel like the longer that we keep the blindfold on of the two of swords, the bigger the monster seems on the other side of that blindfold. I feel like it's illusionary. Doesn't mean that there's not something, you know, that I have to deal with. But I feel like it's definitely talking about it's better off to deal with it. You know, it's facing fear. It's looking fear right in the face and saying, I am not going to allow you to stop me from receiving these blessings. I'm not going to allow this energy to block potential opportunities. 
Um, you know, it's not the Eight of Swords. It's only the two. And um, so I feel like this is energy that can be changed pretty easily. But again, is there something I'm not facing? Is there something, you know, that I'm afraid to face? I feel like, again, with solitude, it could certainly talk about someone who's retreated. Um, and I feel like we all need that sometimes. So, you know, it's not about judgment. Like, I feel like we, we all need to retreat here and there, spend some time alone, and then just open your mind. Because I feel like when you're alone and your mind is open, you're going to receive signs so much easier, so much clearer. Um, but again, nonetheless, if you miss a sign, it will be sent again. I promise you. All right, well, let's keep going. Mm, beautiful. Positive movement forward. Number eight, new beginning. So again, that blindfold, take it off. Face what you got to face. You can get through it. And look at the energy that follows that. So, you know, it may be a different way of thinking also. Positive movement forward. Look at this person. They're in a ship or a boat by themselves, which kind of relates back to solitude, right? But they're heading towards the sun. They're heading towards the sun. And the sun, to me, represents the light. It can even represent playfulness. A new beginning. Now, it doesn't have to mean all areas of your life, but something wants to move forward and it's like, it's ready. Are you ready? You know, and again, no judgment. Whenever you're ready, you're ready. Um, and I feel like that's a little bit what the hermit is doing. I'm reflecting. I'm trying to find this spiritual wisdom, trying to overcome something. And I feel like you will overcome it. Again, face it, don't hide from it, deal with it, and then watch how things start to move in your favor. By the way, let's take four across. So remember that nines are final reflection. Then, and, and even a nine can talk about um, cycles. You know, we run a nine-year cycle. So we could talk about a cycle that is coming to an end. Listen, that could be scary. Um, but look what's mirroring it, conflict and defeat. So, you know, when I said I felt like the hermit sometimes is brought down or the person in that energy is brought down to their knees it does have to do with some type of conflict that you've been dealing with. You know, you have an eight, which speaks of a new beginning, next to a five that speaks about change. So change over this conflict. Some of you may have felt defeated and maybe you did need to retreat for a little while, um, which again is perfectly fine, but it's definitely showing us why some of you went into the hermit mode to start with. Again, conflict. Maybe I'm trying to figure my way out of this. And, you know, my earthly mind is just like, ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So your spiritual self, your spiritual being, which is the intellect to your soul, is saying, well, I do. Follow me. You can follow me, follow me into my God. Forget the rest of the words. So funny, I was thinking of that movie, um, the one with Whoopi Good, uh, Goldberg, where she plays the nun. We have firm foundation under the hermit. I'm noticing all the muscles on that guy, you know, and to me, uh, that means like spiritual strength, spiritual muscles that I've gained. And listen, I feel like 
where do I gain these spiritual muscles the most from? I don't know if that sentence even made sense, but I feel like it is when we're going through something difficult. And listen, when we overcome it, we should take a second and just appreciate the fact that, boy, I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. You know, look how I have grown from this. Some of you, this is really grounding you. Again, I feel like it's all starting with the hermit's energy, that deep reflection, but then facing whatever I need to face and then allowing allowing this positive movement to begin, right? Because it is about a new beginning. Sometimes I don't, I didn't ask for this new beginning, um, but I feel like it's taking you you know, it's taking you somewhere. It's taking you to a better place, um, potentially a better person. You know, whatever it may be for you, whatever. Again, I get this feeling of being brought down to my knees. So I don't know. I feel like if it's a person, would I want to continue with that energy? Anyways, I feel like this is saying, this is talking about the growth from us overcoming, you know, some of these earthly conflicts and that we can overcome them. We have the Ace of Wands next, beautiful, passion ignited. You know, I feel like you're being guided and I feel like you're being guided to the eight, um, to this positive movement forward. So, I feel like this is saying, listen to your intuition. In the Ace of Wands, I do feel like we have to reach out and accept it. Yes, I'm going to listen to my intuition. You know, it looks like her, her, like her heart chakra is being activated. So I want to follow this. Coming under mental conflict to me feels like, okay, the blindfold has been taken off. We have, look at this, two aces back to back. So now we have the ace of pentacles. Prosperity begins under positive movement forward. Right next to the ace of wands. Some of you may be questioning, you know, a path that you want to take. Like, will I be successful on this path? Is this the right direction to go? Um, I feel like your answer is yes. If you feel inspired again, that ace of wands, it's going to, it's, it's going to, you know, it's your intuition. So it doesn't matter if you have a blindfold on your intuition is still, you know, I want to say going to sing. Um, and then that brings out the ace of pentacles, ace of pentacles. And by the way, on this ace, there's two hands that are nurturing this ace. And the Ace of Pentacles, to me, represents something that is coming into your physical world. Some of you, it's, you know, you're doing something new. Um, and maybe you just don't have 100% trust in, you know, can it be successful? Uh, is this the right direction for me? These two Aces back to back tell me yes, 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 yes. By the way, another 11. So now, two 11s, 11, 11, 11, 11, make a wish. Make a wish. Like, I'm just going to stop for a second and let you make a wish. Okay. You know, some of you could have certainly been working on something and um, you could have ran and ran into some conflict. You know, it's like I want to do something with my life. I want to produce something, you know, with my life. But every time I take a step forward, I get knocked back, too. Um, and I feel like that is, you know, it's probably someone else's energy that is knocking you back now it can't it can also be your own thought system you know but i still feel like there may be you know maybe i'm picking up on people who uh told you you know you wouldn't be successful you wouldn't amount to much or what have you 
why do I want that type of person in my life anyway? Maybe I can't get away from this person. Maybe it's family, but I don't have to buy it, right? I don't have to buy what they're saying. I need to trust myself. I need to trust my spiritual team, you know, and I also want to remind you, I feel like my guys want to remind you that you aren't just thrown down into this lifetime. Your intuition is your GPS. It's going to help guide you. We just have to learn to listen to it. It doesn't guarantee us that we won't go through difficult times. That's just life. But how we go through it is a different, you know, it's, it is, you know, what do I want to say? Like, um, sure, we all get stuck here and there, but continuing to take a step forward, I feel like is the best course of action here. Continuing to just take a step forward. You know, for some of you also, I feel like you may have just started creating a business and you're wondering if anyone's going to support you. And I feel like the answer is yes. The answer is yes. You may just start to, you may just start to begin to see um, the fruits of your labor, the fruits of your hard work. Some of you could be, spiritual you know you may be going through something difficult but as you come out of it you know i feel like i feel like our difficult experiences when we overcome them I feel like spirit then uses or divine uses us to help others who are going through what we just overcame or something you've overcome years ago so you could definitely see some spiritual businesses um and it, again, it doesn't have to mean like you do tarot. It, it could be Reiki. It could be a doctor, a nurse, a teacher. You know what I mean? But you're bringing your spirituality into it. All right. We have foundation and achievements. And then we have movement, choices, and decisions. That kind of feels like that's where the blindfold is at. So I feel like I do need to make a choice. I do need to make a decision. And then it would serve me then to step into it. I'm going to slide these up a little bit. I just got really cold. Um, and when that happens, I feel like it's just, it just means there's a lot of spiritual energy around me. Interesting on the board right now, we have, um, two twos, 22. We have two actual ones. So two, two ones, we have two fours. We have a lot of synchronicities already. All right, we have partnerships and alliances. Nice. Look how they're holding each other. Not a handshake, right? Not a handshake. This is someone that um, chances are I don't want to let go of. And maybe they don't want to let go of me. Hmm. Memories of love. This is the Six of Cups. And then last but not least, look at this. Beautiful. So, material harvest. This is the Nine of Pentacles. Interesting that we opened the reading up with the Nine, which is the Hermit, which is also a card of Virgo, by the way. And we finished this spread with also a Nine. But this is the material harvest. This is seeing the fruits of your labor. You know, again, I feel like if I'm questioning a path, Will I be successful? I feel like the best course of action is just to step into it. Because I, f I feel like you're going to be guided. That's the main message. I feel like, you know, once, and even with the blindfold on, I feel like I'm still being guided. Material harvest. This is seeing the fruits of your labor. Some of you, you know, because we do have the marriage card above it. But then we also have conflict above that. 
this can certainly talk about singular energy. Maybe some of you have thought about separating from someone and, um, you know, change is hard, but sometimes it's worth it. Most of the time it's worth it, especially if you're being guided to make these changes. And again, the Ace of Wands is exactly what it's doing. It's, it's passion ignited. It's action. It's inspired action. And then the Ace of Pentacles, prosperity begins. And then here, you're literally seeing the fruits of your labor. You know what I love about the Nine of Pentacles? This is someone who's willing to work hard for these results. And it doesn't even have to tie back to like, I want to make a ton of money. But I feel like money just follows. Um, and it is mirroring movement choices and decisions. Some of you, I feel, you know, you may be taking on the single status. But listen, I feel like if that's the case, it's because chances are you wanted to. Um, but maybe haven't yet. You know, maybe even your morals are like, ah, you know, when you marry, you're supposed to marry for life. And yes, I just realized two fours are marrying each other. Hmm, interesting. Um, anyway, I do feel like some of you may have become single. Now, this could have been a while ago. And um, being single is what allowed you to then, I feel like, create. Like, create. Be yourself. Nine of Pentacles is about feeling strong on your own two feet. Like, I really don't need anyone to help complete me in that area. And it may even feel good to feel, I don't know, independent for a while. So I love that you have the Ace of Pentacles with positive movement forward right above it. And then literally we end with the Nine of Pentacles, seeing the fruits of those labors. You know, there could have been some, some, what do I want to say? Um, blocks in front of you and maybe the test was will they overcome these blocks maybe these blocks were really to teach you something again that you then turn around and use first of all in your everyday life but also i feel for some of you 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 use them to help others and that's really what this life is about you know when we leave this lifetime God's not going to say, you know, did you become an attorney? Did you become a doctor? No, God's going to say, how did you help? How did you help your fellow man? You know, when you were given the blessings and the courage to move forward, did you then turn around and help those behind you? I feel like the answer is going to be yes. Hmm. Some of you, you may be working from home. See what's on the bottom of the deck. Mm, the waiting game. The waiting game. You know, I don't really like this energy, and I'll tell you why. Mm, we have judgment underneath that. Judgment, you know, it's interesting because we're in a waiting game. So we're waiting for something or someone. But then judgment is like, but my dear, I need you in the current energy. I need you in the current moment. This is so I can send you signs. So I can inspire you. Um, you know, judgment talks about a rebirth. But yet the waiting game feels like the human side of ourselves. Some of you, you may have been waiting on someone. Someone to come around. But I feel like maybe 
It's not the best course of action. You know, it's completely up to you because you have free will. Um, But I feel like something better is probably in store for you. But you also have to allow it. And I feel like that's what these two aces are about. And then we do have the Six of Cups. So Six of Cups is about happy memories. You know, it brings me back to like the inner child and the playfulness. This could... um, This can certainly talk about someone that you already know, someone from back in the day, someone that you would have good memories about. Some of you may be actually making a move, like back home, back to, you know, where you went to school, somewhere where you do have happy memories. So let's say, you know, I've been waiting for someone to take some type of action towards me yet they don't or they do and then they don't and then they do and then they don't how long am I gonna wait right and then I feel like if this is speaking about love at all why would someone put me in that type of energy right you're either gonna love me or you're not gonna love me it really is that simple love me or don't love me And maybe that's what you're figuring out in the hermit's energy. Because I feel like they're, I I feel like the waiting game, I feel like it's coming to an end. And it may not be easy in the beginning, in the beginning. But very quickly, I feel like it's moving you potentially to a life that you didn't even expect. And I mean that in like the highest of energy. No more waiting. Again, if it's speaking of love, you either love me or you don't. You either want me or you don't. And if you do want me, then you need to start proving that. Right? But in a way, I feel like if someone's kind of got you on the hook, do I really want them? And these are the things I feel like we have to really truthfully ask ourselves. You know, judgment literally says truth, right? Being completely truthful with oneself. Another reason to rip off that blindfold. But at the same point, I feel like your guides are like, even with that blindfold, we're going to get through. We're going to get through. Some of you are on this path towards maybe another, but I do feel, I do feel singular energy. All right, let's bring out the Gilded Tarot. You know, you really have beautiful energy here. Um, the only, the only part of the reading that I would say is somewhat difficult. First of all, it would be the waiting game. That would drive me crazy. I am a Virgo, um, and it would drive me crazy. I don't know how much patience I would have with someone. Um, you know what I mean? Like, especially relating to love, like, you don't want me or you don't. Um, but I was going to say something else. I don't know. Let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Tarot. Give him a cut. And let's start at the beginning. But of course, we're reading it as a whole. All right, we'll look at that the tower. So the tower talks about disruption. It can talk about an end. Um, you know, someone may have fallen from grace. But I don't feel like it's you. You know, you may have received this tower, but I have a feeling, I just get this feeling that if that's the case, the day will come when I'm going to look back and I'm going to be thankful that something did end. And if it has anything to do with love, I feel like there's, there's new love on the horizon. 
Again, it can be with someone you already know. Um, doesn't have to mean you're in a romantic relationship with them. But it wouldn't be someone who, you know, when you think about them, you get angry or what have you. It's quite the opposite. Like loving memories. And again, I don't have to have been in a relationship with them. But I feel like they're on their way. Or you're on your way. Temperance, look at that. So, Temperance, first of all, card is Sagittarius. Um, Temperance's first message is patience. But I'll be honest, I feel like sometimes it's because Divine's being patient with us. And, you know, they're not going to make you move until you're ready to move. They're going to not, they're not going to make you take that blindfold off. That's something you have to do on your own. But this does speak about divine timing and trusting in divine timing. You know, that means divine is at work in your life right now. So can I overcome that tower? A hundred percent. Look at this, the Ace of Wands again, right over positive movement forward. So Temperance is literally saying, you take that blindfold off and I promise you that I will guide you. The signs will be clear. Yes, you're going to have to take a few leaps of faith. But again, it's like, I, I feel like you're going to know it within. You're just going to feel it. Three aces in this reading. Now, I really do feel like Temperance is saying, you know, I'm patiently waiting on you. Patiently. Because again, there it's not about pressure. You know, it's not about judgment. It's whenever you're ready. But I feel like it's giving you some clarity that, you know, again, whatever I don't want to face. And I, I don't know why I keep bringing it back to the waiting game. Maybe I just need to face that, you know, someone that I have feelings for, but isn't showing me, you know, the love that I want to show them. Or maybe they're just not that person. Maybe they're not your, you know, like your real love. You know, maybe they're there. They were there to teach you something. Um, and, and maybe the lesson was, again, not to wait on people. You know, I'm not saying like, don't ever wait, you know, and this is a bit. And when I say wait, I'm talking about those who have a tendency to like ghost you, you know what I mean? Like may communicate and then shut communication off. How long do you want to accept that? You deserve better. But you got to know that. Maybe you're giving the towel. Maybe you're saying enough is enough. And I say that because what's mirroring it, again, is movement, choices, and decisions. Hello, Ten of Cups. Now, it's interesting because Ten of Cups is coming over conflict and defeat. And I'll be honest, I feel like this is more about potentially someone who could have promised you, you know, the world, but delivered pretty much nothing. Um, and... You know, because this is a house of love, joy, laughter. But the way we're opening up the reading, I, I feel like for a lot of you, you're not in that energy. You're not feeling joyful. You're not feeling happy. Maybe you're not even feeling loved. So 
this 10 is coming over a 5. So I feel like this is what I had hoped for. And chances are you're going to get it. But it just may not be, again, in the same place. Some of you, I could definitely see this being energy of like moving back home. Moving back to a place where people did love me. You know what I mean? Like, like I had a lot of love back there. Whoa. Six of Swords. Beautiful energy to come out right now. And I'll tell you why. Especially coming over the tower. Um, Six of Swords. You need to go back one card. And understand what this person is leaving. This person is leaving. Because this is. You know, a lot of times, well, in the psychic tarot, they call it moving on. So what am I moving on from? I'm moving on from toxic energy. I'm moving on from those who keep me in a state of waiting. Enough is enough. I'm moving on from, you know, the things or the people that really feel like they kind of held you down for a little bit. But you're no longer accepting that. Why? Because I feel like you yourself are becoming more and more grounded. I also feel like because the Hermit's opening up this reading, which really does speak about your spirituality, and it's right next to Divine's energy, it's like you just know. You know deep within your heart that there's better out there. Right? There's, there's better ways of living. There's more opportunities out there. You know, definitely it's heading towards these aces. But it's coming over the firm foundation. So some of you, it's like your vibration is lifting. Your spirituality is becoming whole. And now you know who and what is toxic. It's like I can't hide it from myself anymore. Then we have the Five of Wands. Five of Wands can talk about a lot of ego. Definitely can be fighting type energy. Um, in the Five of Wands, I feel like no one really wants to back down in this energy. You know, like if I'm waiting for someone to acknowledge you know, that, you know, you've had me on the hook. Apologize. Chances are I won't get it. But in the same breath, I don't feel like you need it. It is a five. So again, change. And it's coming over the ace of wands, which is passion ignited. You know, I feel like temperance or divine wants you just to recognize that. You know, recognize, like sometimes... Who I think I want is really not worthy of you. I also feel like with the Six of Swords moving right into that energy, it does feel like you're saying no more, enough is enough. Some of you, you are giving that tower, um, you know, you're giving that tower away. You're, you're ending something. And you're ending it because you're now feeling this spiritual guidance. You know, you're just feeling that there's more out there. But also understanding that if I make no movement, then everything will, will everything not remain the same? I feel like the answer is yes, it will remain the same. Another 11. That's probably why I brought up the Twin Flame reading slash soulmates. Um, because again, I associate that number with that type of energy. But you may not even know that. You may not know that there is this soulmate energy that is out there and... By the way, I feel, again, 
I don't feel like this is just talking about love. I really feel like what it's saying is it's you taking back control of your life. It's you now trusting in divine timing. It's you saying, I'm going to go ahead and take a step forward. I'm going to listen to what my intuition is telling me, even if I'm a little fearful, because literally it's it's putting you into positive energy. If anyone's been telling you that, you know, maybe you have some ideas that you'd like to bring, you know, to the world. And if anyone is telling you, well, you won't be successful, they're wrong. I can tell you that right now. As long as your interest stays peak, as long as you're willing to put in the work, then I know you're going to reap those benefits. It's showing it. You know, not only does it feel like once this tower energy ends whatever needs to end not only does it feel like potential like a love out there that just so happens to be on my path but also it is about abundance it is about your money your creativity and doing what you feel inspired to do no matter what anyone else says You know, it reminds me when I started my Tarot. Well, actually, I started on Facebook with Tarot, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want to hear what anybody else thought. You know, everyone I knew really knew nothing about Tarot, and neither did I, to be honest. But I felt guided to it. Um, but I did keep it like what I was doing, quiet. Well, I told my daughter um, and my son. I told my children, um, you know, because I knew they would be behind me 100%. But other than that, I, and still to this day, I mean, like now my family knows, you know, um, but a lot of my friends, my friends, like not who are local, but, you know, for like, on, let's say my, my old friends from Facebook, they don't know what I do. And you know, maybe it's the Virgo in me, but. It is because I don't want anybody else to tell me the way I should be thinking or what I should be doing. I don't want anybody to tell me that what you're thinking of doing, you won't be successful. This is showing the opposite. All right. Well, there is that Five of Swords. Right over that Ace of Pentacles. Interesting. Okay, we'll come back to that. Now we have the Three of Wands. You know, it feels like you're moving. This definitely feels like movement. Three of Wands is about really living in the present moment. It's it's taking a moment and just finding things in your life that you're grateful for right now. And that could just simply be being alive. You know, this is the energy of optimism. This is the energy of expecting good things to happen. And then therefore they do. You know, it's a change of your thought system. There's no way the two of swords could coexist with the three of wands. They're completely different energies. Optimism. This is you saying to divine, I know that you'll bring my ships in when they're meant to come in. By the way, coming right over the marriage card. Um, but let's go back one card. So we, here is that actual five of swords that many of you are moving on from two fives back to back look at just the synchronicities in the numbers some of you may find that someone new that you're going to meet even if i already know them but again i i get this feeling like if i if this is about me let's say falling in love but we'll see um Again, I may know who they are, but I don't know why I'm not picking up on like we had a romantic relationship. Maybe you did. Maybe it was short, you know, um, not to talk about myself again. But, you know, like Sam and I, who we are now in union and, you know, we're in our 60s. Um, we dated when we were teenagers and then we broke up. 
And I won't go into the whole story, uh, you know, about that because many of you already know the story. Um, but we did break up and then we each went our separate ways. I lived my life. He lived his life. He got married. I got married. He got divorced. I got divorced. You know, we, we both have two children. Um, and the reason why I'm saying all this is because, you know, 40 years after the fact, we ended up getting back together. And I'm relating that to the Six of Cups. And by the way, I actually did move back to my hometown. So the only reason I'm talking about myself is because I feel like some of you are in that energy right now. All right, well, let's keep going. Three of Cups. So over movement choices and decisions. You know, it's like your energy is changing now. So it's like we're getting through these difficult times. Divine is saying we're here with you every step of the way. We're helping to guide you to, you know, I want to say a better world, a better life. Um, and it doesn't have to be in all aspects of your life. But definitely it feels like there are some major changes going on here. You know, these two vies back to back, they both speak of change. One is changing of toxicity, like not taking it anymore. The other one is drama field. I'm not going to live in a drama field world anymore. You know, it, it's saying don't allow yourself to get caught up in someone else's drama. But I feel like the Six of Swords is a major, a major um, energy here because, again, I'm not taking it anymore. I am thinking about what it is I want to do in the world. I am allowing myself to be optimistic. Even though I've been through this, again, that waiting game, I feel like someone has had you on the hook. And, you know, it has to be, it has to come from you. And Divine knows that, you know, those are, that's free will, right? Free will choices. But it, Divine may have something better in store for you. But again, Temperance will patiently wait for you to take off that blindfold. Patiently wait for you to trust within your spiritual team again. And then patiently wait for you then to take a step forward. And then I feel like you don't have to worry about the rest. Just follow that intuition. All right. We have the Page of Swords coming over partnerships and alliances. By the way, two threes, 33. I mean, come on. We have 22, 44, 55, 11, 11, um, 33. Some of those can talk about master numbers. But I just find that interesting. And then look what comes over the memories of love, the night of wands. Could something be stirring up? Something new be stirring in the universe on your behalf? Knight of wands talks about passion, but it's coming towards you. It can be fast moving energy. By the way, the Knight of Wands is mirroring the Ace of Wands, which is coming over positive movement forward. I'm feeling some of you are reconnecting with someone. Now, let's say that's not what you're interested in. You know, by the way, I, I don't feel like I am. It's like I don't feel like I'm thinking of well, some of you might be thinking of someone in particular. I feel like when you you may have thought about someone as soon as that Six of Cups came out. You know, and if you, like, if you put a name to it, that's probably the person that may be coming into your life. Passionate. Desirable. Page of one, or Page of Swords right before that. Could be some type of communication. 
could be unexpected. You know, Paige can be someone from my younger times, my younger years. Um, with the swords, it can represent an air sign, though, you know, doesn't certainly doesn't have to be. Um, so if it would be an air sign for you, it'd be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But again, I feel like it certainly does not have to be an air sign. I feel like this is talking about more in the line of communication. And it's interesting that temperance is kind of, in a way, I feel like in a way, kind of holding it back. Because maybe with, you know, as long as I wear that blindfold, maybe I'm just going to say no to everything. So that's why temperance, I feel like, you know, is having more patience with us than us waiting on divine timing. If we're waiting on divine timing, wow, it's showing. But then we have to be bold and be willing to make these moves, right? Again, your intuition feels like it's just going to be ignited. You know, in the Ace of Wands here, it looks like someone's heart chakra is being activated. I feel like these two fives where that toxicity and that drama lies, I feel like it ties right back to this waiting game. So definitely the six of swords, you're leaving these fives behind. Enough is enough, right? You feel strong within yourself coming over firm foundation. And again, I'm, no I'm noticing all these muscles and I feel like they're your spiritual muscles. And if we look what's mirroring it, it's optimism. It's optimism. I don't feel like optimism like immediately opens up. It's when I allow it to open up. You know, it's when, again... I'm willing to face whatever I need to face. You know, these fives are definitely what you need to face. Um, and again, the energy, it's not serving you. You know, whether it be love or someone you're in love with. Or it can even talk about a job. It may talk about, it could talk about your whole life. Right? But being careful not to get pulled into other people's drama. Being okay sometimes with not getting an apology or a recognition that someone was wrong. You know, in the tower, I often feel like someone has fallen from grace. I don't feel like it's you. Um, but I do feel like I do have to recognize, you know, who I'm giving my energy to. Do they deserve my time, my energy? Or do I put an end to it? Some of you may get a phone call from someone back in the day. And it may come in a very unexpected way. An unexpected time. And that call, I'm saying a call, but some type of communication. And it does feel like from someone of the past, not this person. I want to make that clear. Because I feel like in the waiting game, that's relating back to these fives. That's relating back to this conflict. You know, that's relating back to like even the mental conflict. It just feels too much. Um, so you could receive this call, this unexpected call or an unexpected text, you know, an unexpected like to a Facebook post from someone that maybe you haven't seen in years. We just had a card flip over. Hello, Eight of Wands again. So, first of all, this is coming over the Nine of Pentacles, which literally says material harvest. And then, you know, the Eight of Wands I read in a couple different ways. First of all, I, I feel it's what I think about, I bring about. And I love that it's got the Three of Wands right above it, which, again, is optimistic energy. 
it's that knowing that my ships will come in. I just know it. I do trust in divine. I do trust in my guides and I do trust in my intuition. I feel like that's a must. You know, it's a must if you want to live an easier life because I feel like the more we trust our intuition, the more guidance we receive, the more clarity we receive. So definitely is about what I think about, I bring about, but it's also fast moving energy. And I love that it's also coming over your money. I feel like it's coming over your independence, like you feeling independent, you feeling strong on your own two feet. But I also feel like it is also fast moving energy. So anything that you're using that Ace of Pentacles for, where it's saying, what did it say? Prosperity begins. And then literally here is a material harvest. But it feels like that goes on and on and on. It's just you're doing the right thing now. You feel like, you know, this is where I was meant to be. This is this is what I was meant to do. And I'm really trusting in it. And I'm, I'm reaping those benefits. And I love that it's mirrored by the Three of Cups, which is really the energy of joy. Um, it's the energy of celebration. You know, it's like one of these ships in the three of wands is coming in. All right, let's, um, you know, unfortunately, yes, the tower is mirroring the ten of cups. So, you know, to me, it feels like something that I thought was going to happen didn't happen, at least not in the way I thought it was going to happen. But I could have been, you know, a smooth talker. Someone who promises you the world, but then delivers pretty much nothing but heartache and conflict and has you in your head, drama field. You know what I mean? So, but I feel like that Ten of Cups, even though that person, couldn't produce it. I feel like you are going to end up in that Ten of Cups. I feel pretty strong about that. So even though one couldn't give me what I needed, right? One couldn't follow through. That doesn't mean that someone else won't. Especially with the Knight of Pentacles coming right over that Six of Cups. Again, passion ignited. And mirroring the Ace of Wands. Okay, so I feel like I get what this is saying. Um, and I do feel like, yes, it does start with us. It starts with us facing our fears and acknowledging what's not working, who's not working in our life, and then making those necessary, or taking those necessary steps for change to start to happen in your life. Trust within yourself. Trust within what it is you want to bring to the world. Some of you, I'm telling you, it's your experiences, especially the difficult experiences where you're going to turn around and you're going to use that in a spiritual way as in helping others. And it doesn't mean some of you, it's like a spiritual business, but it can just be an everyday energy, you know, where I'm in an optimistic energy now. I go to the grocery store, maybe I see someone who just looks so down and I go over and I just give them a smile. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we don't even know how healing our own energy can be to a complete stranger. But they know. All right, what do I want to look at? What do I want to look at? I think I'm going to look at the Page of Swords. All right. So we have the Ten of Wands. Okay, we got a lot. But let's take them as they came. Okay, I put them all in reverse. 
So, first of all, the Ten of Wands, I said Ten of Swords, this is Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands talks about a period of time of, you know, potentially a lot of responsibility. It can also talk about um, the realization that I have a tendency, you know, and it's it's because you're a loving soul, but you have the tendency to put the responsibility all on your shoulders. And it, and that it can and be too much you know in the ten of wands i often say that subconsciously i feel like someone is wishing for a tower like help me out divine help me out maybe i'm afraid to make this movement on my own so make me make it they're like okay we were just waiting for you to ask all right what else do we have justice hmm Right next to that Ten of Wands. Cutting ties. You know, that tells me that you've been feeling unbalanced. But there is an opportunity to become balanced again. And, you know, when we feel unbalanced, our life just, like, our life doesn't feel right. We don't feel good. You know what I mean? Like, our mind is constantly filled with, you know, again, mental conflict. So justice is about using that sword to cut the ties to whatever is not serving you, whoever is not serving you. And justice, when it shows up in a reading, it really is about making you whole again. That's really what justice's job is about, making you whole again. But it does take your physical action to cut whatever ties. Sometimes the ties can be energetic. And sometimes it can be a physical tie. Um, also, Carta Libra, by the way. Well, hello, beautiful Knight of Pentacles. Hello, Guardian Angel. You know, you have a few cards that speak of, of patience. One is temperance, right? Patience, but then divine timing. But I feel like, again, Temperance is kind of waiting on us. So now we have the Knight of Pentacles. A very slow moving Knight, but it moves slow on purpose. You know, the Knight of Pentacles tells you, I come at the right time. I come at the right time, not before, not after. I come in a present day moment. Another reason why, you know, how we solve judgment, where it literally is calling you to the present moment. This knight who promises to bring in an ace, um, the ace of pentacles, which means to me something that's coming into your physical world. Well, we already see the ace. We have the nine of wands. We have, hello, knight of swords. So we went from the page of swords now to the knight of swords. We have the moon. Heart of Pisces, Ruler of Cancer. And then we have, hello, Six of Cups again. Wow. All right, so let's talk about what just came out. So again, that Ten of Wands. The responsibility is all on my shoulders. It's too much. It's too much. So I need to use the Sword of Justice to cut those ties. Um, and of course, that's only if you want to, but it feels like it would be the best thing, you know, if let's just say you want a better life, you want a better love, you want to, you want your money to, um, and what you do in the world to multiply. And then we have the nine of wands. Nine of wands to me is about, it's another card of reflection. But in the Nine of Wands, it's really about how much you have grown. You know, all the wands behind this person, this is action that's already happened. And this person's reflecting upon that. But they're really reflecting in a, on a positive, in a positive way. Like, look what I have overcome. And once I realize that, then I start to pick up this feeling of... There's really nothing I can't overcome, especially if I'm working hand in hand with divine. 
And then that moves into the Knight of Swords. Well, that to me, with the Knight of Pentacles in the same line, um, again, the Knight of Swords is communication. There's no doubt about it. And it's coming in to the reading, as is the Knight of Pentacles. Um, so I feel like this reflection and the realizations, remember I said in the four here where I felt like it's it's like recognizing the spiritual muscles that you have gained just from your experiences and the things that you've overcome or the things you, that you are going to overcome if you allow yourself. And then it is moving you into this Six of Cups energy. There's just no doubt. Now, the moon right before that, sure, it can represent Pisces. Um, it is the ruler of Cancer. It can also represent uncertainties. But listen, sometimes maybe that's the excitement of life, right? Maybe I'm not meant to move too quickly. Maybe I'm meant to enjoy each and every moment, right? Each ship as it comes in, I enjoy it. It expands my world. It expands myself. This can also talk about very dreamy type energy. Some of you may have even had dreams about someone. Oh, that brings me right back to the Twin Flame reading again because I definitely felt like two were like astral traveling and connecting through their dreams. I also wouldn't be surprised if this person, now I, I have to call it a person at this point because that's what I'm feeling, um, also has gone through similar experiences. To me, that would represent a soulmate energy because I feel like soulmates or twin, fl twin flames really do mirror each other. And to me, that means that we've both gone through some types, you know, different types of difficulty, but each has overcome. And, you know, in a way, I don't feel like I'm taking that blindfold off for anyone else. I'm taking it off for me. But then look what follows. Okay, I feel like I now needed to bring out the romance angels. Because I want to look at the Six of Cups that is here twice. Now we have 66 connected. Two knights connected. We actually have three knights. And you will be like, why does she keep saying repeating numbers? I say that because I feel the similarities between you and another. I feel the similarities within experiences of you and another. All right, let's give them a cut. I think they're in reverse. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, interesting. My whole deck is a little... I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's some are reverse and some are not. Um, though I don't really read these in reversal, to be honest with you. We have... Hello, romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. And I'm looking at the Six of Cups, the two Six of Cups. So it's two people. Someone may reach out. You may automatically feel like your heart chakra being activated because I do feel like your heart chakra is going to be activated. And immediately you might start feeling these romantic feelings. And I feel like that's a good thing because it's telling you it's worth exploring. Keep an open mind. Look at this. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. You know, it's interesting because it makes me feel like in this, because we have two Six of Cups, I feel like both know each other um, and probably from an earlier time. Uh, but again, both have 
you know, when they think of the other, they think happy thoughts. They probably remember something very good about each other. Um, whether we roman we were romantically tied, and if we were, then I feel like you're coming back together. But the reason why I'm just like wow, because it literally says soulmate. So keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. All right, let's see if anything else wants to come out. You know, this reading, like most of my readings, are like a road map. You know, they're just helping. It's like reading a map, right? Like, okay, I'm, I want to go here. I need to read the map to decide, you know, to find the best direction. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Now, I don't want to talk about myself again, but I have to tell you that I understand this energy because when Sam and I reconnected and it was over a phone for five years, we just talked every single day and night for hours on end before we actually came into union but that was more me you know like me and my nerves like do i really want to do this but i knew in my heart that i did why am i saying that oh um because for some of you again we have the knight of swords the page of swords it kind of feels like communication that is probably unexpected um, or as you start moving forward, you know, you could just simply run into this person for those who may be moving back to a place where you do have happy memories. That's what I feel. You might just bump into this person and a conversation just might, you know, break out. And as that happens, I feel like so does the romance. So does the romantic feelings. So it is saying that your soulmates I had no doubt. You know, do I feel like this person in the waiting game is a soulmate? I don't. I feel like it's either a free will decision or a karmic. And if it's a karmic, then it definitely is there to teach. You know, that's what a karmic is. It's there to teach us. Now, you know, a karmic can talk about like previous lives where maybe you were the one who had someone waiting and now you have to experience that you know that's what karma is you know there's bad karma but there's also good karma which which am i going to create today getting to know each other and that's exactly what we did on the phone. We got to know each other again. You know, we knew each other as, as teenagers, but not as grown adults. Okay, something is telling me to take one more. One more, one more, one more. Okay. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. That's what you're doing in the Three of Wands. You're in a positive energy. It doesn't mean everything is going right in my life. It just means I'm going to find the things that are going right. And it means, you know, if something's not going right, then I'm going to just see that, know that. Make the changes necessary. You know, these ships are coming in. That is a promise. It's just when is the best time? That's what the Knight of Pentacles speaks about. I come at the right time. When you can handle it. Potentially when you would say yes versus no. Stay optimistic about your love life. You know. Sometimes we give someone a title of a soulmate or a twin flame. 
And, you know, sometimes I feel like that could be the problem. Like we, like if we just strip away the titles and just understand that there's different vibrations of love, there's lower vibration and there's higher vibration. Which do I want to be in? I feel like this is lower. This is higher. But listen, it's because you yourself has, have raised your own vibration and it all starts with taking off that blindfold. And the rest, I feel like, just takes care of itself. And I mean that, you know, when I say takes care of itself, I mean that you are being more proactive. You are, well, I feel like, number one, you're in a more peaceful state. And when you're in this peaceful state, it's very clear to pick up the signs and then trusting those signs and following them the whole way home. All right, I am going to do another Mother Mary. But let's not forget, the first thing that came out in this reading is inner child. It's interesting because now I could see it relating back to these two Six of Cups. Maybe it, you were both children. You know, and when I say children, I mean the whole way up to like 18. I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care. Well, it doesn't feel like there's any playing going on up here. Instead, it feels like there's a lot of mental conflict. But when, I, again, I just face whatever I need to face, put an end to whatever I need to put an end to, and then take at least one action step forward, then I feel like that's when your playful nature comes out. I definitely feel playfulness down here, romantic down here. Um, just like, you know, and I, and that's why I brought up Sam and I, because I'm telling you, like, we spent hours and hours, and they were romantic, and I wouldn't give that time up for anything. You know, yes, it took me five years to, like, book that airplane ticket, but at the same time, like, I'm glad, because we got to know each other. You know, it wasn't, like, if I went to given those years, then it would have felt a little strange. You know what I mean? Or at least that's what, that's the way I'm picking it up. Like I may not have felt quite as comfortable where now when I moved into his house, I felt a hundred percent comfortable. Look at this love, 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 love. Love is the answer to all of my questions. Love. In all ways, love of oneself, love of another, love of your faith, love in all areas. But I feel like this is really speaking about these two people in the Six of Cups. Now, this is not just love reading, though, because this is also love of oneself. So again, it's taking these aces and creating with them and creating abundance for yourself, feeling good within your own skin. And it may have felt like it's been forever, but maybe that blindfold's been on for quite a while at the same time. Yes, I could certainly been in love every year, but that feels more like more of a lower vibrational love. It feels more of like someone who just would rather fight than love. Well, I feel like you would rather love than fight. So divine is showing you how you can reach this status, this vibration. You know, the minute you take off that blindfold, I feel like instantly your vibration raises because that's a bold action to take. And I feel like temperance or divine would be very proud of you. Like, look at her. Look at him. He took off that blindfold. He said no more. And that's what we've been waiting for. You know, there's nothing more that I can help you with as it relates to whoever you're waiting for. 
you know, I can't, like divine is saying, I can't help you in that area. But I can sit with you. I can be with you until you make a decision. Until you allow me to guide you. You know, this is what I feel is quite a beautiful reading, even though there are hardships here. But, you know, if there were no hardships in a reading, then I wouldn't believe the reading. Because I feel like in life, there are things that we have to overcome. And I feel like as we overcome them, we just grow. You know, another way of looking at it is, you know, we are spiritual beings having human experiences. Human experiences. Divine is with us every step of the way. They always want to help guide us to a better life. But I guess we have to want it, right? We have to want it enough that we, we say no to, again, the people or the energy who is, feels like they're trying to pull you down. So you got to pull yourself back up. Don't wait for them. Don't even rely on them to pull you up because they're not going to. I feel like they're just going to continue to pull you down. They're going to keep you in this state of drama, in this state of toxicity, in this state of too much, too much, too much. So where does the change need to happen? It has to happen within me. But the minute I say yes, then look at what ignites. Look at what ignites. Prosperity. Some of you, you're creating a business. Some of you are working from home. And you may have wondered, will I be successful? And the answer is, as long as you put your focus in there, and especially when you use your spiritual knowledge, the answer is yes. All day long, because it's literally showing that for you. But then also love. Using the, tie, or the, the sword of justice to cut whatever energies are making you feel unbalanced so you can feel whole again. Love. Love is the answer to all my questions. Don't leave yourself out of the equation. Love yourself. And I feel like the rest will just follow. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I didn't want this to be real long, but, you know, I always allow whatever messages I want to come out to come out. I give it whatever time, excuse me, whatever time it needs. I have no problem with that. Um, the reason why I say I didn't want to make it too long is because I know certain people won't watch a reading after a certain, like if it's too long. And I feel like this reading is meant, listen, I'm just going to let go of that control. I'm trying to control it and I shouldn't. I'm just going to trust and divine that who's ever meant to hear this reading, this these messages, that you'll hear them. Um, and I want to thank you for paying attention to your intuition. So do your guides. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Your guides want to thank you for being you. There's nothing wrong with you. And if someone else is telling you there is, well, then they need to check themselves. Get ready. You know what I mean? Because I feel like the minute that blindfold comes off, get ready for inspiration. Get ready for romance. Get ready for love. But not any old love. Because your vibration has lifted, so must the person who's coming towards you. And again, that three of wands, so important. As is the six of swords. And they're both mirroring each other. I'm leaving. 
what's not working, who's not working, what's become toxic, goodbye. And I'm moving into optimistic energy. You know, another way of saying it is I expect good things to happen. And then they do. Especially with the eight of wands right below it. When I think about, I bring about. Well, in mental conflict, if I'm thinking there's going to be more conflict, chances are there will be. But because I'm no longer accepting that, and instead I'm thinking about my life and the way I want my life to look, and I'm putting those seeds out there, well, those seeds will flourish. Just need to believe in yourself. You need to believe in the unexpected because that's usually how real love comes in in a really unexpected way. But yet at the same time, I feel like divine has their energy all over this. I loved it, guys. I loved it. Um, but I love all your readings. But I really did love this one. I, you know, this is a type of reading. Let's say you still have a blindfold on. Let's say you're unwilling to stop waiting on someone. Then that's your choice, right? And that's what Temperance is saying. Like, I will patiently sit by your side until you're ready. But the minute you're ready, well, then I'm going to jump into action. And that's temperance saying that, divine saying that. I'm going to jump into action. And I'm going to guide you to unbelievable places, unbelievable energy, and even unbelievable material harvest. But all of it you deserve. All of it. All right, guys, I love you. Allow your playful self to come out. Understand that there are different vibrations of love. You know, yes, I mean, we've all been there where we given our love to someone who just didn't give it back in the way that we really deserved. You know, we all had to make that decision. Do I continue? to stay or do I not? I know I've been there and I've made the decision not to stay in there. And like I said, you know, and again, like I hate to talk about myself, but I, this feels important. You know, I was in a relationship for 25 years and I'm still friends with the person, um, but it did become too much. So we did break up and I had just gotten myself an apartment um, and feeling pretty good. But then I had that moment of weakness where it's like I called that person. I almost was going to bring that person back. And right at that moment, my call waiting came in and it was Sam on the other line. Now, I hadn't spoken to him in 40 years. That changed everything. It changed everything. And all of it was unexpected. That is the reason why I tell my story so much because, you know, you know, I wish we could plan good love, but I feel like the best way we can plan, let's say, for love is to think about ourselves and our own vibration, you know, and what we're willing to accept and what we're not willing to accept. For some of you, that's what you've been learning. Like, what are you willing to accept and what you what are you not willing to accept? You know, even in that Ten of Cups where I felt like, ah, uh, I didn't feel like you had that Ten of Cups, but here it is showing, right? But I feel like that was more of a promise. But I did feel that that Ten of Cups is still going to be, it's just going to be with someone different. What does that say down here? Um, keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. So some of you, this was your expectations in the waiting game. I thought they were my soulmate. And listen, it doesn't mean they weren't a soulmate, but maybe they were a soulmate that was here to teach you. 
And by the way, if this was a karmic, and sometimes I feel like the lesson is just saying, like, no, I deserve better. And you learn that lesson, you learn it for eternity. So you don't want to look at it like, woe is me. Instead, look at it like, look at what I've done. Look at how, like, the, look at the things I've accomplished. Look at what I've overcome. Like, put that belief back in yourself. And I just feel like the rest will follow. All right, guys, I'm going to leave that be. I love you. I love your spiritual team. I love my spiritual team. Um, by the way, I think we're all one big soul family anyway. So I feel like our spiritual teams are always talking. Just like I feel like when we leave this earth, all of us will meet in the afterlife. And... Um, we already know each other and I could see us like sitting down and having conversations about like the different readings that we had or the different experiences. Um, but I definitely feel like we're here to help each other. We're here to help each other overcome and to really build each other up. So I hope this reading has built you up or at least opened your eyes to the possibilities that still exist. All right. I love you guys. I thank you. Again, I thank your guides. I thank my guides. And we will see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.